All right, so navigating through the web to try to find resources or what topics to learn for web development, it's not like you're searching through this like jungle of material. You're searching through what feels like an entire different planet, okay? So what I wanted to do in this video is put together a list of topics that you should learn, kind of like a syllabus, and then in the description, there'll be a link, and then each part, each topic will have a bunch of resources to go learn that specific topic. Okay, so uh, let's get right into it. Okay, first up, we're gonna need an editor, and all that really is is a place to write code in, so um, you don't need one with all the bells and the whistles. I personally use one called Adam, but there's a few out there, and they'll all be linked in the syllabus, so you can kind of decide which one you think is best for you, and which one you think looks best and uh, flows best for you. Okay, Rutgers decided to lock me out of all their buildings, so we're going to do the next section out here, which is HTML and CSS. These are the two fundamental languages of the web, really. Every website you see uses them. Facebook, Yahoo, Google, YouTube, whatever, they all use them. They all use a bunch of other ones, too, but these are the foundational pieces that you need, okay? So, what's the difference between them? Essentially, um, take this analogy, right? Imagine you're building a house. And what do you do first? You kind of put the foundation, you put some of the cement, the wood walls up a little bit. Um, that's the structure, that's the HTML. The CSS on the other hand would be more of the design, it would be um, what color are the walls, uh, where are the windows going to go, so a little bit of placement too, which is kind of the hard part of CSS. Um, but yeah, they're really not too hard to learn, it's just like there's a, it's more almost like memorization, you just slowly get better at them and learn the small tricks and like workarounds and you really never stop learning them either you don't kind of just do this section and then move on it's a skill that you're really gonna mature with over time all right so next up is css3 this is the newest version of css and you're probably saying okay well i already learned css what is this um basically css3 just added a bunch of new features that you should probably get familiar with um you can do a lot of animation that you used to have to do in javascript and write a bunch of code but now you can just do some simple animation in css3 and make some really cool looking stuff so check out the resources there's like um this guy made this candle burning thing it looks really cool just with CSS3. There's really a lot you can do with it, but also in the resources, I want you guys to focus on like ways to better write your CSS so it's not just like this 10,000 line document of messy, unorganized stuff. There's really new, exciting ways to write CSS so it's modular, so it's reusable, stuff like that. And you wanna form these habits early, and I'm telling you if you do, it'll be worth your while because those are the people who are gonna get hired who really are that next level um, with web development and managing all their thousands of lines of code. Okay, so next up is JavaScript. And this is actually a really cool section because so far everything you've learned, like HTML and CSS, they're very, they're like markup languages. They don't really follow the fundamentals of computer science or the fundamentals of programming. So this is a really important section to learn. And it's going to open you up to a lot of new difficulties, but also a lot of new opportunity. So what makes JavaScript different, and why would you add it to your web page in the first place, is the fact that it makes it more dynamic. Um, let's say you want to click on a button and have a menu pop up. That would be JavaScript. Uh, let's say when you're scrolling through your Facebook feed um, and you want that video to pop up on the side while you keep scrolling, that's JavaScript. It's this stuff that's more dynamic, more interactive. Um, that really makes your website a lot more exciting. And it's going to be hard to learn at first because you are first being introduced to like all these new fundamentals. But once you get the hang of it, it's really not that bad and um, there's really a lot you can do with it to make your website feel a lot more complete and a lot more whole. Okay, so next up, um, you finished your project, you made a website, and now you want to put it online. You want a domain address, you want people to see it. So, how are you going to do that? Um, well, essentially, there's a few ways that you can actually do it, and it's argued kind of what way is best right now. Um, but before I get into that, I think it's more important to kind of understand what happens when you put a website online. Um, so right now, you're looking at it locally on your own computer, right? But when you put a website online, you're putting it on a computer that everyone can access, and that's called a server. So you interact with it a little bit differently. You have to upload your files onto another computer that exists. You know, it's not a physical computer that you own, but um, that a hosting company can provide for you. They can provide servers for you. And um, I'll link a few good hosting companies, but essentially what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a domain and somewhere to host the files on a server. And there's a lot of companies that provide that. Um, I'll leave those in the description as well. But yeah, that's a traditional way to do it. Um, another way to do it is use GitHub and uh, that's the next section which you'll learn about 
uh, as well. Okay, so next up you're gonna wanna learn GitHub. Um, all that really is is kind of like a community environment for people who are sharing code and uh, building projects together. So it's a great place if you have more than one team member and you wanna work on the same project at the same time from anywhere in the world, um, you can do it. So essentially you put your code online and people get different branches of it and work on it separately and then they merge them together into, I wish I could use both hands for this, but um, I'm holding the camera. So um, a lot of people use GitHub now. It's also used for kind of putting files on servers now too and kind of um, updating it that way. It has really good version control. So that means like, hey, um, I made a mistake at my newest version. Let me go back three versions ago where everything was fixed. And um, it's actually called Git, not really GitHub. GitHub's just a site where you can share all the code. You're gonna be learning Git. So I'll provide resources for those in the syllabus too. Really not too hard and it gets you a little bit of practice using the terminal. Okay, so lastly, you're gonna wanna learn plugins and frameworks. And if you don't know what those are, it's essentially just other people writing code for something that you might need. So let's say uh, you want a photo slider on your website and you don't really wanna build one or you don't know how to build one, it probably already exists. In fact, it does. I'll leave some links to some that already exist if you need one. Um, framework, same thing. It's kind of like, let's say you want a, to build a website that's really mobile friendly and you want like maybe a CSS kind of a grid system where it's like a two column layout and then a one column layout when it gets smaller. That's like a framework, a CSS framework. And it already exists. And there's so many materials out there that I kind of wanted to end on this note because it will get you really involved in the community. And once you get more involved, you'll be able to you know, get better at reading documentation and just better at navigating yourself so maybe you won't need a syllabus if there's more stuff that you want to learn. Okay, so I finally made it back to my house after wandering around uh, campus all day. But uh, yeah, so that's really it for now. Uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. Like seriously, if you have any questions at all, just shoot me a message. And if you have any suggestions for like future tutorials or syllabi that you want, just let me know. Or if you even want to help out with one of them, that'd be cool too. So let me know in the comments about that or you can direct message me. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching and have a great day.